Back when I reached 500 subscribers, I offered $500 to any Muslim who could prove the existence of a claimed Quranic prophecy about Muhammad. No Muslim was up to the Aww. challenge. So when I reached 1,000 subscribers, I tried again, this time offering $1,000 to anyone who could prove the existence of a belief the Quran claims was common. Again, there were no Aww. takers. So let's give this another try. Recently, Reason Answers hit 2,500 subscribers, and I now have $2,500 on the line to anyone who can prove that Muhammad's explanation for an obvious Quranic error is plausible. I'll get to the challenge in a moment, but first I wanted to take this opportunity to thank everyone who has gotten me this far. This channel is growing rapidly, and a lot of that has to do with you. Thanks again for telling your friends about me and sharing this channel in YouTube comments and on social media. I also wanted to take a moment to thank my patrons by name. Thank you Govind P and Thomas S for signing up on the day I opened a Patreon account. Thank you Daryl B and Welcome Home for three months of patronage. Thank you Wooter for two months, and thank you to my newest patron who wish to be credited as Muhammad SWAT. Thanks also to those who have given one-time donations, either through YouTube or through Patreon. If you are interested in supporting me financially, the link is in the video description. Finally, and most importantly, thank you everyone who is praying for me. Now, without further ado, let's dive into the Quran. Surah 1927 declares, then she brought the child, Jesus, to her folk carrying him, and they said, Mary, thou hast surely committed a monstrous thing. Sister of Aaron, thy father was not a wicked man, nor was thy mother a woman unchaste. Here the Quran appears to confuse Mary, Arabic Miriam, the mother of Jesus, with Miriam, also Miriam in Arabic, the sister of Aaron and Moses two women who lived more than a thousand years apart. How could the author make such a huge blunder? Hard to say, but it's hardly the only highly confused Quranology in the Quran. For example, Surah 2095 has Moses speaking to a Samaritan some 700 years before they existed as a people. Another example, especially relevant to today's topic, is Surah 197 which claims no one was named John before John the Baptist, when in fact the name was common in the preceding centuries. In the end, Allah knows best where all these errors come from, I suppose. But Muslims are quick to offer excuses, I, I, I mean explanations. Before turning to those, let's look at a simple explanation for Mary. Exodus 15.20 reads, then Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and dancing. No similar sister of Moses phrase occurs in the Bible. Thus, someone drawing on their memory of hearing the Bible, or a text that quoted the Bible, could easily associate the name Miriam with the phrase sister of Aaron, and forget the exact origin. Any alternate explanation must offer more explanatory power and not simply assume that the Quran is all his perfect word. By far, the most common Muslim response is to suggest that the description is not literal, usually by saying it reflects some distant family connection. Islamic awareness, for example, in an article filled with ad hominem attacks and other logical fallacies concludes, the controversy surrounding the honorary epithet Sister of Aaron applied to Mary, mother of Jesus, in the Quran has been a characteristic of Muslim-Christian dialogue from the very beginning. Believing the Quran was simply a hodgepodge of Jewish and Christian texts, Western scholars continued to transmit this alleged historical contradiction until recent times, where a balanced and fair look at the relevant texts shows no anachronism exists. Though descriptions such as children of Adam, children of Israel, mother of, brother of, sister of, son of, etc. may presuppose direct physical consanguinity, 
They cannot in all instances be understood as such without imposingly a patently absurd, nonsensical understanding of the text. Just as an example of the kind of dishonesty this article engages in, that footnote to recent scholarship refers to an 1825 translator's footnote and a 1961 encyclopedia that references said note. The note itself simply says the translator finds it hard to believe Muhammad could make such a dumb heir, and offers the alternate idea that Muhammad thought both Marys had a brother with the same name. More on that possibility in a minute. Islamic awareness, like most Muslims, simply ignores the context and all the other relevant data, content to prove that sister doesn't have to be literal in all usages, and leave it at that. Instead, let me turn to a more honest attempt by Joseph Islam. He first tries to make a big deal out of the fact Mary is not called Sister of Moses. Mary is mentioned numerous times throughout the Quran, but she is never referred to as the Sister of Prophet Moses, which would be expected if she was a literal sister of Prophet Aaron. It was Prophet Moses who received the direct revelations from God, and his reverence as a mighty prophet of God is fully accepted by all scriptures. The fact that Mary escapes mention as the sister of Prophet Moses is clear evidence that the Quran is fully conversant with the personalities it is dealing with. That's some nice post hoc reasoning there. People are not normally called sister of or brother of anyone in the Quran, and Mary is only so called once. So it's hardly odd that she's never called Sister of Moses. The Quran shows no clear knowledge of any other Aaron. The logical conclusion is that it's the same Aaron being referred to. Furthermore, Aaron is considered a prophet of Islam, and all prophets are supposedly equal. The fact that our author didn't choose Sister of Moses instead of Sister of Aaron is quite irrelevant. Joseph then makes this leap. In fact, the Quran appears to go out of its way to avoid confusion by not naming the real sister of Prophet Moses, so as to not confuse her with the mother of Prophet Jesus. Um, no, no. The Quran doesn't give the name of Moses' sister because it doesn't give the name of any woman other than Mary. It doesn't go out of its way to do what it always does. Treat women as incidental details, not worthy of even being named. According to the A Hadith, Allah's Messenger said, Many amongst men attain perfection, but amongst women none attained the perfection except Mary, the daughter of Imran, and Asia, the wife of Pharaoh. So Mary is simply an exception to the usual role of female inferiority and is thus named in the Quran. No other explanation needed. Ironically, Joseph proves too much. By suggesting there could be confusion about the two Marys, he invalidates what is arguably the best defense, that no one, no one at all, could be so stupid as to confuse women living a thousand years apart just because their names are the same. Meanwhile, the Quran never once calls Ishmael the son of Abraham. Is it going out of its way to avoid confusion there? Or does this logical gymnastics only work when one wants to ignore what the Quran says about Mary? Back in the world of responsible exegesis, we don't determine what a text means by what it doesn't say, but rather by what it does say. Joseph Islam then tries to show that the term sister need not be literal. Sadly, he makes the same mistake many Muslims do, trying to use biblical references to prove his point. Whatever the term sister may mean in Hebrew or Greek does not determine what it means in Arabic. What he actually needs to do is show that the term sister can refer to distant descendants in classical Arabic. The closest he comes is to suggesting that some Quranic references to brother are more general than blood brothers. His references are inconclusive, in my opinion. But even if proven, that would not at all justify the conclusion that the term can refer to distant descendants, let alone that the same would also apply to sister. The Quran uses the term sister 14 times, including our passage. 
Of the other 13, 11 are obviously biological, and 2 refer to abstract ideas. Note that even this metaphorical use is closely related to biology, two things of closely related nature. So there's no hard evidence that Joseph Islam's assertion is even possible, let alone plausible. There's no evidence of it in the Quran, but let's say it's possible that sister can describe a distant relation, or even an honorary title. So what? Muslims seem to be content to leave it there, thinking that somehow showing it meaning is lexically possible proves the meaning is intended in the passage they want to avoid. Sorry, that isn't how language works. A meaning is always determined by the context, and not by simply looking in a dictionary and picking a definition arbitrarily. One must show that is the intended meaning in context, and Joseph doesn't even bother to try. However, and unfortunately for Muslims, the Quran gives a clear indication of what it's thinking. Let's return to the verse. Sister of Aaron, Mary, thy father was not a wicked man, nor was thy mother a woman unchaste. Keep in mind that the standard definition of a word is normally assumed unless there's reason to do otherwise, which of course would be biological for the word sister. In our verse, father and mother must be biological, or the verse makes no sense at all. What are the chances our author mixed metaphorical sister and literal parents in the same sentence? I would say extremely low. And if we're assuming that an omniscient being who brags about his book being perfectly clear is the author, I'd say the odds drop to 0%. But that's not all. In Surah 3, we find, When the wife of Imran said, Lord, I have vowed to thee in dedication what is within my womb. Receive thou this from me. Thou hearest and knowest. And when she gave birth to her, she said, Lord, I have given birth to her, a female. And God knew very well what she had given birth to. The male is not as the female. And I have named her Mary, and command her to thee, and her seed to protect them from the accursed Satan. Mary's birth is described. There is no way to read this but that Imran must be the biological father of Mary. And it's clearly the same Mary. In the following verses, we find confused references to the biblical Zechariah, that is, John the Baptist's father. And in verses 45 through 47, it's made explicit. Mary, God gives good tidings of a word from him whose name is Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary. Lord, said Mary, how shall I have a son, seeing that no mortal has touched me? Surah 62.12 makes the same family connection. And Mary, Imran's daughter, who guarded her virginity. Who is Imran? Both the Bible and Muhammad make it clear. Moses and Aaron's father. Amran took his wife, Jochebed, his father's sister, and she bore him Aaron and Moses, the years of the life of Amran being 137 years. Ibn Abbas, the son of your prophet's uncle, told us that the messenger of Allah had observed, On the night of my journey, I passed Moses bin Amran, with uh, it's not biological excuse removed. Muslims may turn to an alternate that both Marys coincidentally had relatives of the same name. Indeed, that's exactly what Muhammad said, or at least Hadith writers pretending to be Muhammad centuries later. Mahira ibn Shuba reported, When I came to Nadran, the Christian monks asked me, You recite the verse, O sister of Aaron, but Moses was born long before Jesus, by many years. When I came back to the Messenger of Allah, I asked him about it, and he said, Verily, they would name people with the names of prophets and righteous people who had passed before them. Historically speaking, this passage is an obvious attempt by later Muslims to remove a problem, and has no connection to the historical Muhammad. But let's take Islamic claims seriously for the moment, and say Muhammad actually said this. Muslims, I would like to know why you spend so much time trying to justify a non-literal definition for sister when your prophet already told you the correct answer. 
The term is biological, but the shared name is a coincidence. Do you not actually believe your prophet and think you know better? Allah knows best, I suppose. Joseph Islam too offers this explanation, hedging his bets a bit. There's no reason why Mary could not have a father by the name Imran, or why Mary's name was not kept because of reverence for the sister of Prophet Moses. Similarly, two individuals who bear the same name, each having a brother and a father with the same name, does not imply they are therefore the same individuals. Going back to the Quran once more. And they said, Mary, thou hast surely committed a monstrous thing. Sister of Aaron, thy father was not a wicked man, nor was thy mother a woman unchaste. The clear intent of the crowd is to ask Mary how she could do such a horrible thing given her noble family. Ironically, Joseph Islam himself notices this, although he fails to understand the implication. Furthermore, it is imperative that one understands the context of the narrative with a view to appreciate why certain words may have been used. In 1927-28, Mary was clearly reminded of her association with the great patriarchs such as Prophet Aaron. An association that only makes sense if her parents are the parents of Aaron. So we already have a huge exegetical hurdle. Turns out we have a historical one as well. Again, Muhammad claims, They would name people with the names of prophets and righteous people who had passed before them. Luckily, this claim can be put to the test, as we now know exactly what names were used in the time of Jesus. Historian and scholar of Judaism Tal Elon has compiled every known Jewish name from the 3rd century BC to the 2nd century AD, an impressive 2850 names gathered from both physical artifacts, such as ossuaries, and documentary sources. She notes that, in this period, names of biblical heroes were simply not used in Israel at all. The greatest biblical heroes, Abraham the first patriarch, Moses the Exodus leader, Aaron his brother and the first priest, David the beloved king, founder of the Eternal Dynasty, Solomon his son, and Elijah the mystical prophet, do not lend their names to Jews of the Second Temple period. There is some debate in scholarship as to why this was done. But for our purposes, it is sufficient to note that there is not one known Aaron, and no certain examples of any of the other heroes either. Muhammad was simply wrong. People did not, in fact, customarily name their children after the heroes of the faith. If Aaron was not used and Amram was quite rare, it should be obvious that the chances of any woman named Mary during the first century having a father named Amran and a brother named Aaron are 0%, let alone our Mary having this extraordinary coincidence. A human writing in the 7th, or 9th, century could easily make this error, as he would have no way of knowing about this long-forgotten foreign custom of avoiding these names. An actual prophet of God, with access to divine knowledge, however, would not make such a mistake. And of course the literal word of God wouldn't make such a dumb error either. So here's the challenge. Prove Muhammad's explanation is plausible. Mary was born in the first century BC. At that time, Mary was indeed a common name in Israel. Amran, however, was quite rare. And Aaron is completely unattested to. I'll be generous, and only make you prove the existence of a historical Aaron from the right region and time period, and not require that he had a sister named Mary or a father named Amran. I'll even give you some wiggle room on the date. Specifically, the challenge is to find any artifact or document from the region of Israel that a consensus of experts dates between the 2nd century BC and the 1st century AD and which describes a historical person living in that time frame who bears the name Aaron. In other words, I'm not even asking you to prove the actual historicity of Muhammad's claim, but rather just prove it's historically plausible. Surely your God left you some evidence to support his religion 
and profit for all humanity to follow. Go find it, and $2,500 is yours. See the pinned comment for full legal details. Let's quickly recap. The Quran claims Mary, the mother of Jesus, had a brother named Aaron and a father named Imran. The father of the prophets Moses and Aaron is also said to be Imran. In the Bible, Moses and Aaron had a sister named Mary, but she was definitely not the same woman as Jesus' mother. The Quran appears to have gotten the two Marys confused. Muslims usually try to explain this away by saying the familiar terms are metaphorical. However, both the context of the Quran and Muhammad's alleged words rule out that option. Muhammad's explanation that it's merely a coincidence is also ruled out by the archaeological evidence. Therefore, the clear air remains, and the Quran cannot possibly be the words of an all-knowing God. Muslims, I suggest you leave your false religion and find one that actually stands up to historical scrutiny. May I suggest you give Christianity a try? Thanks for watching.